everybody. It's been a minute. I want to just take a sec and say hello to my friends out there. Um, I do want to talk about amplified tone for a second and something that I discovered maybe halfway through my harmonica journey so far. Maybe it was like like 10, 15, like almost 12 to 15 years into my playing, I didn't realize this stuff. So I want to share some of that with you today. Before I do, I have some announcements to get through. Hang with me because I'm going to talk about some cool preamp tube stuff as it relates to amplified harmonica today. Uh, but first, I do want to mention, I'll try to be brief and to the point, but I want to mention a couple events that are in person around the corner. One of them is the Kerrville Folk Festival. This is about 45 minutes outside of San Antonio, Texas. It's happening June 5th through 7th, and I'll put a link in the video description later. But the Kerrville Folk Festival has a harmonica workshop each year. At the 5th through the 7th is when the workshop takes place, and I'm teaching at it this year. <clears throat> so if you can make it out and you want some in-person instruction, not just group instruction, but one-on-one -on -one time for <clears throat> the attendees as well, geez, you'll get that. You'll also get to play on stage with a band. You'll get some campfire jamming style stuff. It has a little bit of everything for you at this event. P.T. Gazelle, Rob Roy Parnell, and Michael Deeth, we're all going to be there. I mean, so there's four of us, three lead instructors, I suppose, Rob Roy, P.T. Gazelle, and I um, will be the lead instructors. And it's going to be incredible. It's just a fun event. I've done this a few times, so check that out. I'll put the info in the video description. The other thing coming up that I want to mention quickly is I'm going to be going through Austin after that. So if anybody out there lives in Austin, Texas, come see me. Um, I'm actually doing two things in Austin. The first one is an in-person event that's going to be live streamed. The reason I play harmonica, the entire reason, what motivated me, what pushed me to pick it up was Guy Forsyth, who is an iconic artist out of Austin, Texas. Everyone knows Guy Forsyth um, if you're in Austin, Texas. And he's an incredible singer, songwriter, harmonica player, um, guitarist. And he's the reason I picked up the instrument. Absolutely, 100%. So I'm excited to connect with him and offer up a class on leading a band, communicating with a band, and harmonica tips, etc. That's coming June 10th, and I'll obviously come back and I'll let you know more about that. And the next day we're doing a little in-person thing. Uh, if you're around for it, I think he calls it Sinner's Brunch. I'll put more informa information in the video description. So those are the events. I want to talk about Amplified Harmonica today. Before I do that, there are new classes. If you haven't seen them, just go to harmonica123.com and click on Ronnie's classes. And you'll see all my top four right at the top there, things that I've just released. And now we're going to talk about harmonica, amplifiers. So preamp tubes, small amps, middle size amps, uh, big amps like basements, they all have preamp tubes. Those are the little tubes. Should have had a preamp tube, little vacuum tubes in the back. Typically there'd be a rectifier tube, some power tubes, those big tubes, and then these preamp tubes. What I didn't realize for years is the impact of the preamp tubes on the sound of your amp, the sound you're getting. It's a huge impact on the sound. So let's just start with some basics. Amplifiers are typically built for guitar players, not harmonica players. And the preamp tubes they come with are 12 AX7 typically, which are the gain structure is referred to as the mu the value of the tube that how much gain you're going to get out of it, how much volume is going to come out of the amp, essentially is in layman's terms. So the AX7s are the, are the 100%. You're getting full-blown whatever, and it's usually too much for harmonica. You'll know because if you plug into a guitar amplifier, it will feed back. You can barely turn the volume up and it's going crazy. So what I want to share with you is my preamp tube type and order for my basement. I'm gonna start just by talking about that. If you flipped my basement around and took off the back panel and you saw the three preamp tubes from left to right, looking at the back of the amp, 
currently I have. And, and share your what you have. So use the comments sections. Tell us what, what you're running in your, if you have a bigger amp, what's running in it. For mine, it's 12, from left to right, 12AY7, 12AU7, and 5751, the 5751, which is a really popular <laughs> harmonica preamp tube. So the Y7, um, I, want to, I want to say the 5751 would be the slightly hotter of the three, then the Y, then the U. I didn't pick that order. It wasn't like I sat around and went, let me just try a million. I just happened to pop those tubes in. I did understand that the U and the Y would be lowering, and same with the 5751, lowering the value or the amount of output compared to a 12AX7. And they each have their own little characteristics and sound. Why would you want to do that besides controlling feedback well, it's going to give you a lot more wiggle room in the volume. And because of that, you can start to really dial in your amp much easier, much easier. <clears throat> now that's a basement. Uh, when I picked up my 1957 Supro Spectator, that tiny little lamp that I've used in videos uh, that I've posted here on YouTube, it had a black preamp tube in it. I didn't know anything about this, but it was a black, black label RCA. That tube, and I'm not using it in it now but because it was an AX7, but you could still get away with it on the black plate or black label, I think. Maybe it's called black plate. You can still get away with those. They're just so much warmer. So when you're getting into older or vintage preamp tubes, like new old stock, RCA and, and whatnot, that's why you're going to see some of these tubes selling for ridiculous amounts of money because they sound incredible. So, so believe the hype. If you've heard, if you're wondering, should I experiment with preamp tubes and swapping them out and trying different combinations? Yes is definitely a resounding yes would be the answer. It can make a really, really big difference in, in the sound of the equipment. So that's, that's what I wanted to share is check out what you have in the back of your amp. Pull them out, look at it, and look at, there's always a code somewhere and they're hard to find or hard to read often. You won't mess up your amp by experimenting with different preamp tubes. Not that I know of. If somebody knows differently, please put that in the comments, but um, <laughs> I don't understand a word you're saying. Yeah, you should learn about this stuff, preamp tubes. Once you start buying tube amplifiers, you'll, you'll intuitively, um, want to learn, you'll intuitively start to understand by a little bit of experimentation what these different tubes are doing. You have to play around with it though. Then there's like boutique or harmonica oriented amplifiers that are built for harmonica. And obviously typically those come with often, for example, an AY7, like the stage five comes with an AY7 uh, preamp tube. Sometimes you'll only find maybe one or two preamp tubes. Sometimes there's three. Don't let that stuff confuse you. Just know that you should be tinkering with it. Now let's talk about power tubes for a minute. I know a lot less about this. With power tubes, uh, like right now my amps was just tested. It's running at 49 watts. That's a lot of wattage. But by the way, because of those preamp tube swaps I'm talking about, the amp is totally manageable. I have all that wiggle room without having to worry about feedback. I know less about power tubes, um, but I know that the brand of the tube is going to make a big difference. Where it was made, is it a German-made tube? What, was it a Chinese tube? Where, where was it produced? Um, so taking a little bit of time to maybe read some forums on the power tubes themselves might really make a difference for you when you're having to change out or upgrade any of your tubes. Um, and the power tubes usually come in a matched set. So, Shane, what's up, dude? Where have you been, bro? Shoot me a message. Um, so check out the, make sure you know where they're coming from and the quality of the actual tu tubes. Like I said, they're, they're, power tubes are usually matched. So whatever that means, that somebody can explain that in the comments. But if you, I don't think you wanna put just random power tubes together you have to check something and I can't think of the word, but you would want to make sure that they were balanced first 
There's a word that's escaping me. Somebody let me know what it is. It'll come to me in a minute, maybe. So tubes are everything. There are very few things I say this about in the gear world. I'd say the opposite. Work on your playing. Don't worry about all the gear stuff. Um, just get decent gear and then you know work on your playing, and that takes care of the rest. But in this case, you want to dial in your amplified tone. Check out your, again, I'll repeat it. The order of my preamp tubes, if you have a big amp on the basement, from left to right on the preamps, the little tubes, is a 12AY7 and 12AU7 and a 5751. And that results in some great sound that I'm getting out of my basement. There you go. Orlando just said he was at a gig where his buddy was playing and he changed the tubes. Here's another cool thing. So a lot of people own like a new old or a uh, reissue basement. That's a common amp and it's a great amp. It's circuit board, not point to point or whatever, but it's, here's, here's what I know. If you just swap one of the preamp tubes out of that and leave the 12AX7s, the full power preamp, and you put like a 12AU or Y, at least change out one of them, that alone can completely transform the way that amp is responding. How do I know it? Because I played through one where that's all they did to it. And this was in San Diego at the Harp Festival years ago. Somebody let me borrow their reissue and it sounded fantastic. I was blown away at how good it sounded. I was like, what did you do to this amp? You must have modded it like crazy. And he's like, no, I just swapped out one of the preamp tubes. I'm like, okay. Made a huge difference. So take the time to play with the gear that you have first. Don't give up on something because you don't like it. Same thing with microphones. Let me just mention this quickly. You might have more than one. Let's say you got two, three, four, five bullet microphones sitting around. You may hate some of these microphones with certain amplifiers. But the minute you pair them with a different amp, they come to life. You have to really experiment. Don't get rid of gear just because you don't like it with something you own right now. Maybe wait and see what you acquire. Of course, there's a time and place to give up gear and sell it or swap it for something that you really want. Um, but yeah, I'm really into the, the I w I'm sold on the, the, the preamp tubes and I have been for years paying attention to what you're putting in the back of your, um, your amp matters. Here's another a random tube that just came to mind, a preamp tube, a T7. Yeah, you should try that, Orlando, for sure. A T7 might be a little hotter than the tubes I just listed, um, but it can work if you have an A T7. It's a little lower mu is the term used for that gain value or whatever, but the, the AT7 can work. Um, I've had that in my Supro and it sounded really good. Um, the 5751 that I mentioned is a really popular tube. It's the one that most people are talking about, but don't discount just a generic sort of AU7 or AY7. The AU would be the lowest gain value, then I think the AY, then the 5751, that order. So that's the dealio. To recap, I'm coming to Texas, y'all. I'm heading there June, um, early June, and the event that kicks off my travels is the Kerrville Folk Festival Harmonica Workshop. So check the video description if you can join me in person, or maybe you'll catch me in Austin, Texas, if you're in Austin. Um, and then be on the lookout for some really cool stuff after that. I'm going to connect with my buddy Adam Gusso. Now, I know all of you know Adam Gusso. If you're following my channel, you know Adam. And Adam and I are going to connect. Um, it's looking like June 23rd for an in-person virtual event. We haven't done that ever. We've done many in-person events around the U.S. years ago. We have not done anything in person in a long time. And every time we've done a virtual streamed event through Zoom, it's we're each in our remote, our own locations. So... This is a special thing. I'm really looking forward to connecting with Adam. He's a good friend of mine, and I just haven't seen him in a while. And we're going to come up with something killer to offer uh, in a class-like setting, class that we'll offer on June 23rd. More information on that coming down the road. 
Um, so my travels are taking me up through Mississippi and I'll be coming through Tennessee, but I'm just kind of coming through. And then at the end of June, my Chicago friends, you guys, um, I'll be up in Chicago and in and around Chicago playing with the Dig 3. And if you don't know it, we have a brand new CD. Thanks, Christopher. We have a brand new CD and we got a GoFundMe. I'll put the link to that if you want to pre-order a copy to the brand new Dig 3 CD coming out this summer. And as far as Iowa goes, it's, you know, if you've got suggestions, shoot me a message at harmonica123.com. It'd be fun to maybe pick up one other thing as I head back west. This is going to be a long trip, you know, Colorado down Texas, down over towards Austin, Houston, up through Mississippi, Tennessee, and all over the place, Illinois. So it's going to be, I'm going to be on the move. And I'm going to be updating everybody a bunch more. I've been sort of MIA. I've been very busy and I haven't had time to do a lot of uh, posting, but maybe I, I always say I'm going to do this and then I never do it. So I'm not going to say that it's going to happen, but I'd in my mind, I'd really like to try to do a vlog where I come on at least every other day and update you with the travels, tell you what's going on. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments if, that, if you guys are interested in that type of thing. I also want to do some interviews along the way. This is my new microphone. My little uh, wireless uh, DJI mic, which I'm really enjoying. Hopefully the audio sounds okay to you guys in the stream. Uh, with, I have two of these now, so I got a little, this thing is great. It comes with a thing that plugs into your iPhone or your computer and then the case charges everything. And I got another mic right here. So when I interview people or do these classes like with, with Guy Forsyth and with Adam, Hopefully we'll sound good together. We'll have all the audio straight. Um, let's see what the harp sounds like. So you guys say yes to the vlog. All right, that's cool. Um, what else is going on here? Um, did I mention spa? I did mention spa. That's in August. There will be stuff in July too. I just don't know what yet. I haven't made a decision about how July I might have other, uh, things with Honer that I'm focused on that may not be public. They're more, uh, internal. Uh, it's internal work with Honer, if you will, but so I might be occupied. And I want to give a shout out to one of my dearest friends who passed away, actually. I haven't ma made any mentions of this publicly anywhere. Usually when it hits me really hard, I, it's the opposite. I don't like talking about all this stuff, but I lost my good buddy, Mr. Moses Walker. He passed away, uh, few months ago, a couple months now, almost, I would say. And uh, it's been, it hit me hard, really hard, like harder than any other, other thing that's come up. Um, so for me, this is a huge thing. Um, I think about him every single day. Uh, if you don't know who Moses Walker is, I recommend you just search YouTube for Moses Walker and Check out the music that I've that we've made together, and uh, check out some of the recordings that we've had, we've we've put out there. Um, he was just a special human being. Sure, do miss him. Uh, what else? Oh, the spa event is is the dates on that are it's in St. Louis. Just go to spah.org, um, but it runs from the fifteenth through the 19th of August. It's at the Sheraton Westport Chalet Hotel. Again, I'll be there Wednesday through Friday night, and I teach 9 a.m. Central on the 17th, Thursday. More about that later. All right? That's what's going on with me, y'all. Um... <laughs> And after you've worked out your preamp tube stuff with your, with your amps, 
You know, the, the biggest thing, I will leave you with this uh, tip, which is the, the number one thing that was a game changer in amplified playing for me, for me, the thing that caused me to stop selling and buying amps constantly and swapping gear because I couldn't get the amp to sound right. And this, first it was the preamp tubes for sure. That was a big one. I just didn't know about that in the early days. The first five years of playing, no one ever hipped me. But the other thing that was enormously helpful, you guys, is working on hand technique as it relates to the microphone and how that connects to your embouchure, your face, your cheeks and all that. Dialing that in will dramatically alter your ability to get more volume, more control of feedback and all of this and more bottom end to your playing. Those were the two biggest things for me. It was like all of a sudden all the gear just started cooperating after that. All right, that's what I got. If you wanna check out my new classes, go to harmonica123.com and check them out. I'm encouraging you to go click on Ronnie's classes at the top of the website. You'll see four brand new classes or relatively new. Walking by myself, Big Walter Horton, Sonny Boy Number One with Joe Felisco, Jerry McCain Steady, and Horn Lines Part Two, where I taught Monin and Summertime. And that's what's up in my world. I hope you guys have a great weekend. And maybe I'll begin that vlog if that happens. Look for that to start happening early June, around the 4th or 5th of June. Uh, and maybe I can bring you guys some cool interviews with my buddies. Right on, Shane. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, I think a lot of these vlogs could really easily incorporate some of the interview stuff because PT's there, Rob Roy's there. I think that's something that I'll get accomplished. If not live streamed, I'll do it. I'll record it on my phone and upload it to YouTube so you can get to know these guys better. If you don't know P.T. Gazelle, look up P.T. Gazelle. He's a phenomenal uh, jazz player on the diatonic with half valves. The Gazelle method harmonica that he plays, he sounds incredible. And um, Robert Ray Parnell is a, an, an incredible harmonica player out of, uh, well, we'll say Austin, but he's actually just outside of Austin. Uh, rich musical history in his family. The Parnell family is very well known and he is a phenomenal singer and harmonica player. So I'll be talking to him as well and, and maybe I'll get Michael in on the interview as well And because Michael has been, I believe is still the current uh, spa president uh, for the Society and Preservation and Advancement of the Harmonica. So he's a wealth of knowledge and can give you more insight about the organization and all that good stuff. So that's what's coming down the pike. Y'all make it a good one, and I hope to see you out there on the road soon.